What up, y'all? It's your boy, Pac Ray K. Perez, y'all from the Rumble Room. Uh, tonight, <clears throat> we're going to be addressing some uh, something that's been brewing uh, under the surface that's, that's coming to the surface. And I don't know what it is, man. I think it might be the heat from this, the pressure from this quarantine got the urban apologist, uh, got them acting real shifty, real, 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 uh, real nervous in their seats, man. They, uh, they coming out, uh, addressing a new side of, uh, the, not, it's actually not a new side of the, of the Hebrew Israelite community. We always been here, but, um, <clears throat> it seemed that early on, um, urban apologists in their response were more preoccupied with the uh the the one west camps <clears throat> and they found all the ammo that they needed they found everything that they wanted to you know all, all the dirt that they wanted to sort of heap on the whole community they found they, so they accused us of 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 things without really paying close attention to the rest of the community and they made a mistake all right they they overgeneralized they thought we were all from one west camps um Pretty much stealing that, stealing the page out of out of the out of the playbook of uh, of the media, and they forgot a whole population of the community, <clears throat> who they now refer to as the moderates. The moderates. There was one apologist, so real, he said the moderates are more dangerous than the camps. Right before he decided not to talk about the moderates. <laughs> He chose not to talk about the moderates and chose to talk about the camps. Okay. Now all of a sudden there's, you know, all your favorite names, Vocab Malone, Faithful to God, Mike Pereira, Eric Mason. They want to talk about the moderates. All right. But they made a mistake. It seems that they made a mistake. Because huh? the moderates are a little bit more complicated. You know, a, a lot of us, we're, we're, we come from different walks. Now, in the One West camps, there's, there's brothers who have college education. But a lot, of, a lot of brothers come from the street in the One West camps. Same thing, in, same thing in the moderate community. We got a lot of brothers from the street who don't really feel what the One West camps are saying. But then you got, you got a lot of professionals, a lot of studied individuals, a lot of scholars. All right, you know the names, you've seen them. You know, they, they, make, they make enough noise, all right? I don't wanna say their names out of, out of respect, but, but we know who they are. <clears throat> we know who they are. And um, it seems that these names, this particular side of the community, the moderate, quote unquote moderate com community has the the urban apologist, the Christian apologist on, on edge. <clears throat> and so today we're going to, um, me and my guests, uh, we're going to delve into these topics. Uh, with me, I have Brother Renzo, all right, representing Louisiana, coming out of Louisiana. And then I got my, my brother Yashu Ben Dawood from Florida. Got some kings of the South here tonight. Um, Renzo, go ahead and introduce yourself, bro. Yo, 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 Shalom, am I, am I clear? Let me see you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Let me check to see if the people, if the audio was good. I think the audio might, looks like it's coming in good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right, Shalom, fam, peace, peace and blessings, man. Uh, I'm Lorenzo Robertson. Uh, man, I'm just your, your typical Hebrew Israelite. Uh, I would be what they consider a moderate. Um, me personally, I don't have a problem with that term. Uh, it's basically just a term that describes people who are not one with. So I do not describe, I do not ascribe myself to one with uh, doctrine or um, camps or anything like that. But I came out of uh, GOCC uh, oh, wow. previously. Uh, yeah, that's how I came in, into this, uh, what we call the truth. <laughs> well, yeah. they showed me the way, but you know, um, I have a lot of family still in GOCC, uh, Dallas. Okay. So, Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, uh, my background, you know, to make it short and sweet, I was a conservative Christian. I was a, uh, 
you know, I grew up in the South uh, all my life, uh, back and forth from Texas and Louisiana, uh, things of that nature. Uh, I grew up in, uh, I also grew up in a charismatic, charismatic church also. Uh, you know how that can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> So yeah, uh, then I started uh, looking online. I caught, I found GOCC, and um, it kind of showed me some things. Now, now my position right now is a lot of things I disagree with them right now. Uh, I'm doing a, like a, like a, a lot of personal study. Okay. Uh, you know, taking up uh, Hebrew. Uh, nice. You know, things like that. It's some things I disagree with them on, but they're not. You know. Everything they teach is not wrong. Just like I don't think everything Christianity teaches is wrong. You know, mm -hmm. Christianity on the surface is is okay. Uh, yeah, so there's some things you agree in Christianity. Some things maybe yeah. you agree. Just like there's some things with the GOCC camp you agree with, and some things you disagree. With. Something right, right, right. I mean, you know, my position is everybody doesn't have the the total truth. You know, um, it's always some lies mixed with some truth somewhere. Yeah, we're all trying to sort it out together, right? Yeah, we're trying to sort it out. We've been trying to do that for a year, for like for the last three thousand years. <laughs> and, you know, okay. You can say you can, you can say you can say Christianity been trying. You know, they had the truth for years, two thousand years. But huh. <laughs> look at we still debating Christianity <laughs> today. <so. laughs> Here we are, still trying to figure it out. That's pretty much it. I don't have a, a big social media uh, outlet because <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't my plan. Uh, but you know, I'm here today because uh, that's the thing said about things I believe I want to address. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, we're gonna get into it, uh, bro. Bro, Yashu, wanna holler at the people? Yeah, shalom to everybody. Shalom to everybody who into the uh, the camps, the camp stuff. Uh, that brother would just spoke just now, man. He he, he basically, you know, summed it up real good. For sure, for sure. All right, all right. Well, let's get into it, guys. Um, lately, uh, we have uh, Vocab Malone, and we have the likes of Eric Mason. We got, we got, uh, <clears throat> who else? We got uh, Adam Coleman. We got Mike Pereira, Faithful to God. We got mm -hmm. uh, Nefernity uh, in a symposium formed a coalition uh, to come against the. Uh, the moderate, the quote-unquote moderate side of, of, of Hebrew Israel. How you guys feel about that? And, and even, uh, even how, how do you guys feel in general about what's, what's going on in the, uh, the, the urban apologist community, how they're coming at the Israelite community? Yeah, man, it's, it's, um, it's strange, man, that they would do this at this, this time, uh, <laughs> you know, what's going on right now. So hmm. uh, I think, man, it's just, it's just a narrative they have to... Uh, they have to, to to keep up with man. They 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 have to, you know, the box is too small for just one west one west camp. You know they didn't, <laughs> you know they debated the one west camp to to a tedium. Uh -huh. They can't, you know what I mean. So it's now they got to kind of expand and and try to um, lump other people into the box. And so 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 they're uh, they they uh. They're tired of speaking of one West Camp, so they they're searching for greener pastures. Is that what it is, or absolutely, man? It's it's uh it gets tiresome, man. I've been I've been keeping up with the, the back and forth on that uh, Christian Israelite discussion group for like maybe six years, mm. on and off, mm. and uh, it gets tiresome, man. It's they well, they, they have answers, they have answers for them, and 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 you know the Israelites come back with answers for them, and it's just it's just it's just tiresome. Right, you kind of you kind of get the you kind of get some of the same conversations rehashing, and, right. and I think um, with with the moderate with the moderate community, I'll just use that term because that's really kind of the functioning the functioning uh, term right now, you know, so everybody can understand who we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you uh, you know you wanted to go into uh, a particular apologist. Um, lecture about what a moderate hebrew israelite is so we're gonna we're gonna we're definitely i'm definitely uh um give you the lane for that bro because i want to i want to hear your thoughts um right but it's rick caldwell rick caldwell rick caldwell was one of the speakers for the cyber conference in, in uh, vocab mm -hmm. malone's recent cyber uh apologist cyber conference and uh mm -hmm. he spoke on 
you know, what what a moderate Israelite was, for those who don't know. And uh, and so, bro, Renzo cut, uh, took issue. Now, before you go in, bro, bro Renzo, uh, I just want to, um, you know, speak to the people really quickly. Um, many people may listen to this program and, and wonder, well, why, why are these brothers talking about this issue? Why, wh- who cares what, what they believe about, about, uh, about, who cares what urban apologists believe about what, what moderate is, or what the, anybody in the, in the Israelite community believes. Um, but just for the record, um, as a community, I believe it's important to stay informed of, uh, of, the, theolo- of the theological landscape. Now, what do I mean by theological landscape? Right. Knowing, what you, knowing what you believe about, about God, knowing what you believe about the Bible, right? <clears throat> um, and so that includes, uh, that includes staying, in, staying informed about what you believe, um, knowing what you believe, staying informed about what others believe, but not only about what others believe concerning their own opinions, right, the, the ideas that they form, but also about what they believe about you. Now, should it be, should what they believe about you be a hang-up? Absolutely not. Uh, but in order to effectively increase and grow in knowledge of self, studying your history and examining your beliefs and the beliefs of others will help you to be assured about who you are and who you are not. So we have this idea of examining yourself, self-examination, right? To cultivate self-development, to to cultivate knowledge of self and to understand what others believe so that no one can tell you what you are, okay? A wise man once said, Awareness is like the sun. When it shines on things, they're transformed. So this is the importance of, of being aware of what you believe and being aware of what others, others believe as well. Okay. So, Brother Renzo, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the lane for you, bro. Uh, <clears throat> before we, before we uh, get into the general discussion, man, I want uh, go, go ahead and um, go ahead and break it down. Uh, what, what you saw that uh, that rubbed you the wrong way? All right, are we speaking on about what uh, vocab and the uh, symposium or Rick Caldwell or? We we can start with Rick Caldwell. I think that's a great place to start because he was he really is going to um, his discussion discussion of what he what he talked about will really inform the the listeners. Um, about what was coming down the pike from 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 what they believe about what they believe about moderates. So right, right, right. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to give him I want to give him credit. He did he did make a distinction. He said that um, you know not all moderates uh, believe what he was um, what he was doing. What he was trying to refute. Uh, he did say that not all ten points that he brought up didn't apply to every every Israelite. Right. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was a few things that I, I, I just had an issue with, and it was it was it was purely theological. Um, okay. And, and the point he brought up was um, the main issue. What, what really caught my attention. He said that um, law keeping changes the trajectory of the scriptures. Mm. Right. So mm-hmm. I want to know. I want to know. I asked him because I, I left a message on his uh, his YouTube channel. And I asked him, how can how 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 does he reconcile the uh, apostles uh, still keeping the law after Christ had died, right? That's a good because question. Christians, Christians, Christians believe that Christ, the shedding of his blood, was the uh, introduction to the new covenant, right? Uh huh. Uh-huh. So it's I mean, how do you reconcile that? You know, the apostles and and even even um, even some sects of um, some Jewish sex uh, around the Christ's time was still keeping keeping the law. Now you can appeal to uh, they was doing it for the gospel. Uh, the temple was still operating at that time, mm-hmm. but you know that's <laughs> that's that's kind of irrelevant because the shedding of, shedding of uh, Christ's 
you know, Yeshua, his blood supersedes the temple, right? Okay. It should have been it should have been an immediate stop to what they was doing, right? It should have been going right. out preaching right. to people saying, "No, you can't keep the law." It it's uh it kind of it kind of invalidates what Christ did, right? Oh, okay, you never, so you never hear that, right? So so let me let me uh let me catch the people up. So so Rick Caldwell, um on 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 Vocab's channel. I want to say it was a couple of days ago. He released, there's a video called The Problem with Moderate, Moderate Hebrew Israelites. Now, I believe it was 10 points, 10 points that Rick Caldwell um, uh, brought up. Um, right. I, I didn't write those points down, but basically those points define, they're def, sort of defining traits of what, of what Israelites b- believe. Now, Brother Renzo, uh, Brother Renzo had points that he disagreed with. And so one of the, what, what Renzo is saying that, <clears throat> that, you know, the, the, if we go over the history, the temple was still standing after, after the Messiah ascended. Right? The, the temple where they were doing Levitical sacrifices well, and, the, and the Levites were still sacrificing. Now, granted, there was a lot of idolatry in, going on in the temple. There was a lot of things that were happening in that temple. Correct. You know, and 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 I think I believe it was Christ who said, "Do as they tell you, but don't do as they do." Right. So the we had the Levitical priests who are hypocrites who are telling the people to follow the law, but they're not they're not following the law themselves. But what we have is Christ never telling the people not to follow the law. Now, if we fast forward to seventy A.D., the temple was raised. So until at, and from the point where Christ ascended to the point where the temple was raised. There was almost almost forty years. Right. And so, and so go ahead, break break it down, brother Renzo. Yeah. Um, even even my point was even after even after his uh, after his his exaltation, um, I think that you still had law keeping, right? Mm-hmm. My 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 problem is it was a lot of Israelites that didn't get the memo, even even the ones that followed him. Because they still was keeping the law. Now, Christians have been telling me that you know, Christ, uh, his his sacrifice supersedes the temple. Mm-hmm. So I mean, why 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 would why would you you know? It just doesn't make any sense. There's now, a lot. I, of, there's, I would, some expo- there's some explaining they have to do. Right. I, I would have I would have more respect for. Uh, um, I heard this before, and uh, it was a plausible answer, and. Mm-hmm. and um, I don't have a major problem with it, but I still don't agree with it. But if you, if you would if you were to tell me there was uh, some overlap um, that they didn't know, they didn't um, they didn't get the memo. But you would have to explain to me why they didn't get the memo after, right. after Christ. Yeah, after I mean Christ, to, to, to to I mean to, to to put it all. I mean we still to put it out there. We still have apostles. We still have apostles celebrating the. Uh, uh, some of the feasts we have them there for Pentecost. Right. I believe we have we have them in there celebrating the uh, feast of the love of bread. Hey, right. bro, Yashu, uh, you want to weigh in on this, bro? You got any, have any thoughts about this? He's still on mute. One sec. I wonder if he. Uh... Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Loud and clear. Yes. Uh, well, the uh, the this, and that's that's the crazy thing about it is, is because you know, for the fact that that whole doctrine that the laws has done away with has came down through the ages over the past two thousand years. The only reason why it's like that is, is because the Gentiles basically took over a movement that was not for them. And the only reason why it was changed or the only reason why they followed Paul after the disagreement between Paul that or that Paul had with the Jerusalem assembly, which was over the law, which was over circumcision, even in the text itself, it, it, it and it's funny how a lot of Christians don't see that, but there was a dis. There, there's a point in the New Testament where the uh, 
because Paul was part of the movement, even though he was kind of a shifty character. But there was a point where even in the text itself, it says that all of the other disciples started fo stopped following him. And Paul was the one that actually said that. And Paul was the one that started attacking the, attacking the community in his letters. Okay, when Paul so was talking about the, the circumcision, he was talking about James, Jesus' brother, and the rest of the apostles. Okay, okay. So, so just to bring balance to the conversation, um, <clears throat> one of the issues, one of one of the issues in in uh, I think conversation between Hebrews is um, who was Paul? Now you have you have Hebrews that are uh, that believe in Paul's works, and then you have Hebrews that that sort of distance themselves from Paul's works. Now, that's definitely that's definitely a topic for a uh, controversial topic for discussion. I just want to I just want to provide some, you know, you, you have a lot of um of early church knowledge at you, so I I just wanted you to uh fill in the gaps uh of the conversation where me and me and Renzo may not have not have provided support. Bro Bro Renzo, um so so that was one point um mm -hmm. was there uh, any other any other areas that you any other criticism that you took with uh rick caldwell's yeah. presentation absolutely bro um let me before i start what what, what is y'all's position on the doctrine of the trinity um for now it's like i'm kind of my position <clears throat> On, on all ch all doctrines concerning the Bible, are mm -hmm. they're never they're they're not above um, not above reproach. Like there's nothing nothing is off limits from from changing because I think um, and I, I have to preface this because I know the, the all the apologists they're gonna they're gonna hop on me because I haven't I I don't I don't Absolutely. speak on I don't speak on the Trinity. Um, because I don't know enough, I don't know enough to really, to really believe one one way or the other. I know it's controversial. Okay. I'm really okay. sort of, I'm really sort of uh, reserved. Now, obviously, my default is the Trinity, so I'm I stay looking for evidence that really kind of <clears throat> disproves the Trinity. Now, now, before I let you go, um, um, the reason the reason why the reason why I say this is because. I haven't really, it's, it, you can look in scripture and find arguments for or against what I'm looking for, what I'm, what I'm waiting, what I'm waiting for is information that I come across that talks about the, the early church sort of mm -hmm. contriving this idea. Now I know a lot of people have some really good ideas, but I'm really, I'm really sort of kind of reviewing. So I'm, I'm tentative. Like I'm, I'm, I'm only on, I'm like, I guess now I'm, I'm by default I I am kind of a trinitarian but it's not something I contend over because you know there's lots of good arguments that are that are that are not you know for non-trinitarianism but I don't I don't contend over it. But go ahead. I, I don't know Yashu Yashu what's your position? Yeah, I don't I don't subscribe to the trinity at all. Mm. Uh because I you know the trinity was a made up doctrine that was one of the the uh, uh, the councils, uh, from my understanding, and of course I don't have all of the information in front of me, but that was one of the arguments that if you know if God was one person, or if He was three persons, uh, there, there, there's a meme that's going on uh, around Facebook where Jesus is praying in the garden. And Jesus says, uh, hello, fa uh, hello, Father, this is me, you. Yeah, that, so you kind of get the idea of how it don't make any sense. You yeah, know, that right, when that, God that, in the that, Old Testament, he constantly says, it's just me, one God, it's just me. Keep telling Israel that, me, one God, blah, 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 whatever. But all of a sudden, after the church, you know, after church doctrine, and as a matter of fact, that's actually one uh, uh, one of the church's creeds that uh, came out of the Council of Nicaea is the Trinity, and uh, but the Most High always said that He's one. He's one God. Okay, you so know? so Yash Yashub is 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 non-Trinitarian. 
Renzo, what what what's your position on it? Yeah, I'm I'm a non Trinitarian. Um, okay, absolutely. This is the area of interest to me. Um, I've been debating back and forth with Trinitarians for for years ever since I've been in that group. <laughs> All right, so so, I so I could so I'm I'm here, I'm, I'm here learning from you brothers <laughs> right now. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Yeah, I was yeah for the longest I was uh, taking a um, Aryan position. That was that that was uh that's also a non Trinitarian position. Okay. Uh, but yeah, what what uh, brother Yashu uh, he described was um, he described uh, Jesus in the garden praying to himself, and he started saying that it's me, you, the Father. That would be uh, that wouldn't be Trinitarianism. That would be uh, modalism. That's mm -hmm. when you know um, when you know when people believe that God is in three modes. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think Trinitarians believe that, but. Uh, and the Council of uh, Nicaea, they didn't, they didn't really talk about the Trinity. They talked about, it was, it was really about Jesus, uh, his nature. Uh, was he God? Because, you know, that's when you had the Aryan controversy, uh, right. the beginning of the Aryan controversy. And, so, and, and so one of, one of, one of the, uh, one of the issues that, um, we may, I may have to start this live again. This Zoom trying to tell me that I only got 10 minutes left, but, um, <clears throat> before it goes out, um, one of the things that Rick Caldwell brought up was that um, we needed we needed salvation. We needed to believe in the Trinity for salvation. Now, do you do you think that's true, Renzo? Oh, oh no, absolutely not. Um, Why not? You can even uh, you can even um, well, it's it's not explicit in Scripture. You would you okay. will, you will find no you'll find no verse that says you should believe in the Trinity. Uh, okay. for salvation. It's not salvific uh, to say the least. Uh, uh -huh. You can go all the way back from the prophets to the uh, to the apostles and you won't see that creed in there. It's only a, a post-biblical creed that was uh, imposed during uh, you know, the early church period. Uh, actually, Athanasius, he's the one that that really um, kind of got the, got the ball rolling on the, uh, the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, you can go look at the uh, Athanasius creed and uh, that, that statement he made—that's what Trinitarians believe today. Wow. That was like in the, that was like in the early, um, well, the late third century. Okay. So that's when that's when you see the really uh, the importance of believing in the doctrine of the Trinity, because it was okay. a lot. It was a it, it was a bloody history behind that. So I imagine because we have all these divergent beliefs, and they're trying to standardize the religion. And get everybody right, right. under one 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 creed. Yashu, right. Yashu, uh, um, <clears throat> do you? Do, so you don't believe? You obviously don't believe the the Trinity is a salvific issue as, as well, do you, brother? Oh no, 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 not at all. I don't believe that at all. Why not? It, it, for the same reasons that Ren, Renzo, you, you got the uh, you were studying athletics yes. as well. That led you to the conclusion. Oh uh, no, I haven't studied that guy that the uh, the gentleman just talk, spoke about, but you know I, you know, I, but I do know that the whole Trinity thing is made up, and you know from from what I could see, even with the, the, the Old Testament itself, you know I don't see anything about a Trinity in the Old Testament. Right. So so because even in even in Daniel, when we look at the, when they describe. You know, I think it was Daniel chapter seven, when the um, there was one who was the ancient of days, and there was one who who took the scroll, right? Right. Yep. He described them as two different people, and even in Revelations chapter five, it's really kind of the same thing. Like you, you have two different individuals. You have mm -hmm. the one who sits on the throne, and then you have the line of Judah. So that's a that's right. a very interesting. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that right there would be that would only prove bilateralism. That's when you believe that uh, God is two people, and uh, that is that is not. I mean, it's not trinitarianism, but it's it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you have, uh, but let me let me Pat, let me before you uh, go on. Let me let me clarify some things because I'm going to get uh, bum rushed and saying I'm <laughs> I'm misrepresenting Christians and all that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna appeal to me and you know <laughs> try to correct me that uh, Tertullian he's a he's an early church African he's an African church father uh, that he mentioned the Trinity 
back in the uh, uh he probably he probably lived in Africa, but I'm not a hundred percent right. sure he was of African right. origin. Uh lived right. in probably North Africa. Right, where, right. There's was, a lot of those like, places where the church yeah. were coming out of the uh the early church, the well, Gentile right. church that took over, they were uh uh somewhat Roman provinces. Well, right. okay, well, let, let him get it on record. Go ahead, Renzo. Yeah, yeah. Tertullian, he, uh, Trinitarians, they would say that, uh, were the ones who appealed to, uh, the early church. Uh, they would say he was the first one to, to really, uh, coin the word Trinity, but it was his, it was, it, he, he used the word Trinitas, which is Latin for three. Uh, but it was, it really wasn't, if you read his letters, it really wasn't how they explain the Trinity to, you know, today. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't three people in, in in um. Well, let me say. Let me let me let me be careful here too. It wasn't three persons and one being, right? The way he explained it is that the father was the total substance, and the son was the lesser. It came from the father with a lesser substance. So that that that's kind of like um what you call what you would call. He was he was sort of like a um. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, subordinates, right? So that's that's when the son is uh, subordinate to the father, okay, and, uh, in every which way. So um, they were they were they, they would appeal to him as the early source of going, you know, from somebody proving the Trinity that's closer to the apostles, which was around the uh, well, I would say the early third century. So uh, I just wanted to clear that up because I know I'm going to get that. <laughs> that Ooh. sounds like it sounds like that's like this this is going to be you, the next the uh, next right. highly contended uh, issue in the rumble room. I can just I can see it now. Yeah, but you, but you really the, don't you you really uh, don't see a full a full uh, full all out creed until the Athanasius Creed. That's when they really coined it and and you know, and people died over that doctrine. If you don't believe in the Trinity, you you probably you pretty much you pretty much over. They're gonna Anathematize you, kick you out. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's I, I wanted to clear that up. And uh, my issue was, I kind of I wanted because he really he really pointed Rick. He really was um, trying to point out that the Holy Spirit was a person, was the actual person, huh. right? The personhood of, they call it the personhood of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Now I don't believe I don't believe that the Holy Spirit was a person, not even in the Old Testament. Yeah, because if you if you look at it grammatically, it's uh you know the ruach hakodesh was 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 a feminine, right? And, yeah, it's got a yeah. I know what right. You're so you don't have a. I mean, you wouldn't say that the Holy Spirit is a female, uh, right? Even though some people some people believe that, like GOCC. Well, uh, the 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 at least I think at least the word is it holds a feminine. You know, like in 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 Semitic languages. I, well, I study Arabic personally, um, mm-hmm. and I know you have you have uh, feminine words and you have masculine words. Masculine words, yeah. You don't have a neuter. You don't have a neuter in Hebrew, so uh, well, that's that's when you get to the New Testament in uh, you know Greek. Uh, uh-huh. The point of Greek is a is a gender specific language. So uh-huh. when you get to uh, to the New Testament, you got uh, pneuma uh, or pneuma. Uh-huh. That's uh, the spirit. Uh-huh. And that's a uh, that the gender for that is neuter. Now you can't you won't find nowhere in scripture that uh, a person is described to uh, a neuter noun, All right? Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's justified uh, grammatically or theologically that the Holy Spirit is a person. So, and I know all the scriptures they're going to go to. So we, I mean, we'll touch upon that later. So, so uh, just just for clarity, um, so you believe that the, the when when the Bible when the scriptures refer to the Spirit. It's simply referring to the spirit of the father. Spirit of the father, exactly. That's how I see it. Uh, because it's possessive. You know, you can't you can't gotcha. discuss you know you can't discuss the spirit as being separate from the father. It's the spirit of the father because you have the spirit of Elijah. You know, you got the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh, you got the uh, you know you know spirit of uh, spirit of John. But you wouldn't say that those that that's a separate person from. Uh, Elijah or the other names affirmation, right? Uh-huh. That's what I believe. I believe. I believe the Holy Spirit is God's activity on earth and how He intertwines with His creation. 
Got you, got you. Yashu, what, what do you, what do you, you believe the spirit refers to the spirit of the father when, when the scriptures say uh, the father, I'm sorry, when the scriptures say the spirit, it's referring to the spirit of the father or? Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Exact, uh, just like what the uh, gentleman just said. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so we all in agreement still. Are we in agreement? Um, <clears throat> all right, so so now that that's settled, I think that um, mm -hmm. um, that set a good framework for um, for the listeners for understanding some things that are coming down the pike regarding um, how Christians see them. If, if if for for the listeners, if you're a moderate. Um, uh, you may want to go visit this this website. I'm not I'm not sorry. This website. You might want to take a take a visit to this this video um, on Vocab's channel. It's called "The Problem with Moderate Hebrew Israelites," and you can figure out what you believe about it, what it, whether you agree or disagree. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I I kind of I'm I'm concerned uh, these days with um, being able to uh, being able to sit down with a Christian. 